read some UV and some IR light and then, you know, the light that you see all the time with your naked eye. All they're doing is fooling the sensor within that camera to make it, to turn it into a full spectrum camera. So it's just, they're, they're basically blocking the signal from going to it. But I didn't want to use a full spectrum camera because what I found is how am I going to determine and whether or not it's better to see with your naked eye? Is it better to see with IR or is it better to see with UV? So I have my, um, my video camera can take still pictures in, in IR and I have a point and shoot camera and I also have a DSLR that I can use and, to take, uh, and I, I also developed like a process called the Satera process, and it helps me. Um, it it kind of it kind of gives me a little bit of a a method in which to take my photos to get some sort of control. And so I'll use any one of these devices to sort of do that, and then I want to compare and see if I'm getting more results with. IR or the you know the regular types of light, um, but so far I'm I don't have enough evidence to make a definitive conclusion on that. Huh. I'm still years ahead of that, and you know that'll be years in the future because I, I we get a lot of audio and and the pictures are you know you don't get as many of them so. Now have you trying to. Now, have you been out. at somebody's house or a place of business or an old building and, and have, like, doors slam or or uh, things move or strange noises in the background that are totally unaccountable uh, for? Um, yeah, I mean, you hear things and sometimes, like, you don't, you don't really know if it's paranormal or not, so you don't you can't really make that determination whether or not it is because there's all sorts of things. Like if I've never been to a house before, something that I didn't know was there could have fallen, but I could have thought that (laughs) that was just there (laughs) the whole time. So it's hard to distinguish some of those, those crazy sounds or, you know, of course you've heard like door slams and stuff like that. And, um, uh, like for instance, we were at the sea hunt restaurant in new London, Connecticut. Now, there was this door that was so incredibly heavy that, like, you had to pull it, pull it open, and it would slam shut by itself. But there, I don't care how much pressure that you had in a room, like, if, if your room created a vacuum where, where, you know, one door opening may open another or something like that, this door was so heavy that I don't think that that could work and I didn't see anything happening that would have caused an effect like that to what what had happened is the door like opened and then like it was opened and then let go and it just slammed shut really really loud but there was no one around so I I have had things like that happen where I, I couldn't explain for the life of me how that door could open by itself well um, how about talking or anything like that? I mean, you're, you're say in the building, you you got your recorder going and you get back to your office or your home and you're playing it back. How often do you pick up, uh, you know, um, you know, people talking or strange noises or, you know, I, I you know, I used to be a, a huge fan of Art Bell. And back in the 90s, he used to have these two ghost hunters. It was a, a guy and a woman, older woman. And they would go to cemeteries and stuff like that. And then, you know, they would get all these recordings and they would come on his show and, you know, play him back. And you'd hear like little things like young kids saying, where's mommy or, or hi. And you hear all the, you know, weird, you know, people saying things like, what are you doing here? Things like that. And it makes you just wonder, you know, what, what, you know, what all is going on? Um, you know, do they, I wonder if they recognize that there are people there or, or is it like a recording that they're just saying the same thing over and over and over again, you know, constantly? I feel like it's both. I, um, like, I definitely believe that, you know, we've had evidence, like, we'll, we'll ask, like, use, like, a question. 
that, you know, we'll want like a direct answer to. And if you get something that sounds intelligent, you know, that's like a, a good response back, then I would, you know, feel like that's more of something that is, is trying to communicate with you. But like I have, I, I had uh, uh, this gentleman that I used to see when I was younger and his ex-wife, um, she passed away, but she passed away in California. But she used to do this particular thing where she would walk into the house and she would throw her keys on the kitchen table and, you know, go about her business. But that was like a routine. It was something she did every day. And after she died, um, he would hear that those keys hit that table just like she had come home and thrown them on there, never finding the keys. But it was as if it was just playing on replay. Yeah. Well, something. Well, that would be enough where I, yeah, I, I, I'd be scared, you know? Um, yeah. Cause she's, you know, she died all the way in, um, you know, California. Like I take care of the Monte Cristo cottage in new London and it's, um, a famous, a place that was, I don't know if you're familiar with the playwright, Eugene O'Neill. No. He's, he's basically, he's basically like America's answer to Shakespeare. Like he's, he's tragedies. Well, he wrote one of his best plays ever in this, about this house that he, that he used to stay in, in this summers. And he wrote it about his family and his family was so in, entrenched in tragedy that you know people will hear like his, his mother she um she had, had a morphine addiction and people say that you can hear her sobs i have not heard it i do go in there but i i've you know cause, because i take care of it i still have yet to have any activity happen to me but i've had other people tell me about things and i've also read things about her sobbing in her bedroom and that's what she would do but she didn't, didn't die in the home she died on a cruise but I think that is also like an impression that's just left. Like there was so much sorrow and misery that came from her that, you know, it just kind of left that lasting impression. Yeah, it, it could. I mean, you know, um, boy. Um, so uh, some other cases you've been on. I mean, again, have you had anything where, you know, I already asked you if you saw things move or anything like that. I mean, uh how often do you run across a homeowner where they're really terrified about what's going on in their house? Actually, quite often. Um, I mean, you have people who have families, who have kids who are freaked out. You have people who think that they're crazy because they feel like they can't tell anybody all the stuff that's going on in their house. And that people think they're nuts. I mean, I encounter it myself. I don't always, I don't lead with, hey, I'm a paranormal investigator because I either get, oh my gosh, that's amazing, or be like, oh, that's, that's strange. You know, so, so a lot of people are kind of inhibited and, and don't want to, um, you know, convey that to people. But, you know, they feel comfortable talking to us because that's what we do. But, you know, they're, they're, there's always like, um, you know, and there's, there's sometimes that other things are kind of manifesting what they feel is the paranormal, too. So you get that, like you'll get, um, you know, families that are in turmoil. Uh -huh. There's something bad that's happening, um, you know, you could have like drug addiction or, you know, substance abuse of sorts going on and people are, are just calling you and... and there's really isn't an actual case, but it's still, you know, you're, you're just, uh, you know, so you have people who are, who are, are like freaked out because it could be it, it's something, not even that they're, they're addicted to drugs. It could be a medication that they're taking that's actually making them hallucinate. So <laughs> there's like all sorts of different types of people that call you up. Um, and you yeah, know, the residences, a lot of the time it's you know sometimes you have people who are just curious as to what's going on but a lot of the time it's because there's something bad happening or you know they're scaring their kids or they can't sleep at night um, you know or they're hearing all these noises and they don't know what to do and I mean sometimes it, we 
go there and find out all of the things are completely logical and all the noises that you hear are logical and even that can just give them peace of mind and you know help them sleep at night just knowing that whatever is happening is is a thing that should be happening you know it's like their house settles all the time or there's certain plumbing issues like you're hearing things in a certain part of the house or we're hearing the same sounds but they're really consistent so you know you're finding out like where they're located in the house and stuff like that or you know there's there's a lot of different factors well i you know i i had one guest on my show back about five months ago and what she was saying that um again she had cats but uh You know, when she moved in the house, uh, it was an older home, you know, built around probably around 1880s, 1890s. And she was saying that her cats would begin looking at something, you know, intensely, you know, just staring off, you know, both of them, you know, looking at the same direction, you know, with their ears, you know, pointed up. And then she said later on, she'd be walking, you know, from the kitchen into the parlor and she said that uh, she swore she saw like people or a person, you know, uh, you know, like walk by real fast or it's a minute of a second, you know, just a fraction of a second. And then uh, she was saying that it actually started getting worse where she'd be downstairs and, you know, the upstairs, one of the, the doors would open and, and slam shut. And, uh, you know, that, that, that type of thing would really, really scare me because, uh, you know, that's, uh, letting you know that, uh, there's a presence there of some sort. Well, she found out later that the house was actually built, uh, on where, on where the Indians used to bury a part of a burial ground at one point. And, uh. So I don't know if that would have anything to do with it or, oh. you know, that, that'd be kind of eerie, you know, that. Yeah, I, there's actually um, good parts of southeastern Connecticut that were, um, you know, once the property of Native Americans. And they, like, the tribe is slowly trying to take back some of the lands because, like, there was a Masonic temple that was built over the uh, uh, ancient burial grounds and what ended up happening is they went to the town and they got the land back and tore down the the masonic temple and you know now it's back to being you know owned by the tribe so i mean the the chances of that happening are probably pretty great well i i I tell you i'd be putting the house up for sale and you know unfortunately if you don't divulge that the house is haunted, I guess they could come back and sue you, which has happened. But uh, yeah. fortunately, in the state of Connecticut, you do not have to divulge that information to the next people. Well, a lot of states you do. You know. And, yes. You know, yes, I do know that. In others, it's you know very important that you do that. So I could see that being. Ooh, a little difficult for people to, for teams out there, that's got to be kind of, you know, people are uh, a little bit not willing to let them come in if somebody finds out that their house is haunted. Well, yeah, you know, I have a a friend that uh, his nephew was living with him and his nephew one day, I guess, got suicidal and put a gun up to his head and pulled the trigger and... He still he hasn't been able to sell the house, and that that oh happened goodness. that happened ten years ago, and he's had it on, up on the market numerous times. As soon as you know, he because um, number one he was an attorney, and he had you know in this state you have to divulge anything like that, and as soon as he tells people, hey, you know, my nephew killed himself in the house, in you know the master bedroom, uh, you know that. Uh, nobody will buy it so you know in, in a situation like that i feel sorry for him but you know maybe he'd be rich to go there sometime with a recorder at night and see what he can find you know i know maybe i should tell I him to about get that zoning changed and, and turn it into a haunted inn or something yeah i mean you know <laughs> yeah, i can see his point after that happened he didn't want to live there but you know it was a nice home yeah. 
But, you know, again, like nobody want to touch it. I, I don't know if I would want to buy a house. You know, there is people that don't.